Okay. Fair warning, you're going to see a little bit of a change from now on in the channel and it's that I'm not going to use my mic. Honestly, my mic gave me a lot of anxiety when it came to filming and when it came to editing. It was just a pain in the ass because my camera doesn't have a mic input, but don't worry, I'm saving up for one. So you get a little bit of an echo, you get a little bit of imperfect sound, but that's not what matters. You're here for the books. Let's roll the intro. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things. And I'm sorry if I seem a little frazzled, it's just that I haven't really filmed in a long time and I realized when I, actually when I realized that filming with the uh, mic was giving me like the worst anxiety about filming and I decided not to do it, it was a big like load off my shoulders but at the same time I was like what if people don't like my videos now because I don't sound perfect and then I realized that the difference isn't even that big and also if you're just here because of the sound quality I understand but sorry not sorry I have to make this the easiest for me to do possible let me just think because I think I'm like overexposed Is that better anyway let's go on with the books if any of you have been with me for a long time, you know one of two things. Number one is that I love going into books knowing as little as possible about the books. Number two, I sometimes read books on audiobook and then I buy them. And actually there's a third thing which is I really like sci-fi. And I really like sci-fi written both by um, indigenous authors and also by Latin American authors. So let's get the first one out of the way. This is Ambassador and this was written by William Alexander who is a Latino author. And um, I'll be honest with you, I put off buying this book for a while because it is YA and you guys know how I feel about YA. And it does deal with um, immigration, which is really interesting because it's a sci-fi that deals with immigration. It's really funny. Apparently, um, Gabe is reading under the covers one summer night when he is interrupted by a creature who looks like a purple sock puppet. <laughs> uh, the sock puppet introduces himself as Envoy and asks if it Gabe wants to be Earth's ambassador to the galaxy. What a sane, what sane 11 year old could refuse? So I guess it's not actually YA, but um, more of a middle grade, which I'm actually glad about. The problem is that Gabe's family is in the US illegally. So if he's the ambassador of Earth to these aliens, then what does that mean for his family? And I thought that, you know, even though I, I am not a big fan of immigration stories like that. Not because of anything, but because I have been an illegal immigrant myself and I often find that um, A, I don't want to relive those experiences and B, I just, you know, don't think that all Latino books have to do with immigration or magical realism. I just I thought it would be a good idea to give this book a chance, so I give it a chance. I picked it up. Haven't read it so far, so we'll see how that goes. I've been like the biggest, I will say it now, I'm in a big reading slump, so let's go. On. The next book I picked up, I'm really kind of glad I did because I always forget that I've read this book, and that is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. Now, when you read the synopsis for this book, and this is why I don't like to read synopsis, this makes it sound like a romance in space. It's actually a thriller in space, <laughs> okay? Like it's not that romantic, it's actually kind of creepy. And this is about a girl, um, her parents were part of this program where they were going to go to another planet. Of course, you know, they brought along with them people in um, hibernation and everything. And her parents weren't supposed to have her, but they did. And something happened, we don't know what happened, and now she's all alone on this spaceship, and she is literally the loneliest girl in the universe. But, but, since her parents left, of course technology has advanced on Earth, and she finds out that they're gonna send more people to her. And she's very excited about this, of course, but the people that they're sending might not be who they say they are. I don't know. This book is not groundbreaking by any means, but you know what? I remember I loved it. I read it in one sitting and I and I just really loved the reading experience of it. So I won't have it because that way I remember to recommend it to you because that's the problem. I often forget to recommend books simply because I don't have them physically. That's also why I hoard books. Also, I think the light is a little bit crazy. I think that's a whole lot better. 
I think. We'll see in editing. But anyway, the next book I bought, I bought, <laughs> if you saw the video about me waiting for certain books that I have, uh, that I had gotten and how I realized how Amazon had ruined my book buying experience because I didn't know how to wait for books. This was one of the books that I was waiting for and this is, this is eco-fiction and it is called Tentacle and it, it's by Rita Indiana who is from Santo Domingo, I believe. This says The Tempest meets the telenovela and it's got... Tentacle is an electric novel with a big appetite and brave vision, plunging headfirst into questions of climate change, technology, Yoruba ritual, queer politics, poverty, sex, colonialism, and contemporary art. Bursting with the punk energy and lyricism, it's a relentless addictive trip. The Tempest meets the telenovela. Excuse me, how can I like not pick this up? This sounds amazing. This sounds wonderful. I just, I, I can't wait to read this and I'm really happy to have found another book by a Latinx author that is eco-fiction because I know, you know, you know Jeff Vandermeer writes for me and I think uh, Rita Indiana, I am her target audience so I'm really excited about that. Next up, we have a book that I was go I'm actually in the I'm not in the middle of. I'm 20 pages in. But I was like when this book first was recommended, I wanted it. I wanted it, you know, like I wanted it so bad. But I, it was very expensive. Oh, it's got deckled edges. I love that too. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, um I really wanted it, but it was a, a bit expensive on Amazon and I kept waiting for it to go on Kindle on sale and it never did. And then, babies, I was looking through Amazon as you do, and I found it for four euros, so I bought it, and that is Kill Creek by... Who are you by? By, <laughs> by Scott Thomas. I couldn't see it because the name is here. By Scott Thomas. Now, I know that this is a thriller based on house, and already the first chapter is incredible. The writing is beautiful. But in case you don't know, this is a house where... Um, a bunch of horror authors go kind of to find their inspiration again to write and um, they might find themselves to be the protagonist of their very own horror story and I don't know that sounds so good and I'm like I said I'm 20 pages in I'm thoroughly enjoying it it's got the beautiful I don't think you're gonna see that deckled edges I'm really ex like psyched to finally be reading this and one thing that I really love most books that are set in October, I don't know why, are set around my birthday and, you know, I'm human. I like things set around my birthday. And this is, uh, if you see chapter one, if you'll focus, chapter one is set on uh, Friday, October 7th, and my birthday is October 8th, as you know, because I kept screaming about it to you past October. So I don't know, I'm so far I'm really enjoying this one. It's the one that gets getting me out of my reading slump and really excited. All right, the next one you've already seen if you saw my coming back video and also my favorite book of the year video, and that is Good Morning Midnight by Lily Dalton Brooks. I'll leave a video linked up here. Again, in that video, I talk a lot about my eating disorder. If you wanna know how I'm doing, I'm doing as best as I can. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about um, my favorite book of the year. Good Morning Midnight is basically the story of a post-apocalyptic world. We don't really know what happened to the world because the only perspectives we get are from these astronauts that were studying um, the moons of Saturn and also a very lonely man who decided to stay back uh, in an expedition in Antarctica and he doesn't know what happened either and he has a little companion with him that is basically helping him you know through the last years of his life and um, it's a very soft sci-fi it's a very slow book I don't recommend this book for people that really like action-packed books but I do recommend it if you like gentle um, kind of train of thought kind of um, 
you know, thinking about the past because this book really does reminisce of the things we have done and the things we wish we had done. And I really love books like that, so I recommend it. I don't want to say anything else because when I read the synopsis for this book, I was expecting something completely different and I spent half the book being really bored waiting for something that doesn't happen until the very end of the book. And I still enjoyed it, obviously, but I wish that I hadn't read the synopsis, so yeah. Also, the Netflix movie for this is coming out or came out on December 23rd. I don't know when I'm uploading this, so um, if you saw the movie, it's the one directed by George Clooney. And it's not called Good Morning Midnight, it's called, I don't know, I'll insert the poster right here. That's the poster. I'm really excited to see it. I hope that you pick this up. All right, next up, we have another thriller. And I saw this, um, and oh, it's a hardcover. You know what I just realized this year? That I really like hardcovers more than paperbacks. Who is she? Anyway, I saw this announced on Twitter and they said that it, oh, congratulations on publication date for this book. But I wasn't sure if the publication date was just for the US or if it included the UK and Europe because sometimes books come out in the US before they come out in Europe and vice versa. But I looked it up and I saw it and I paid way too much for it, but that is called um, It's the Cousins by Karen and McNamus. Magnemis, I believe that's how you say that and this has everything that I want. I love me some family drama like mm, I love it. That's like oh, Everything about it. It's it's this is all that I needed to know families keep the best secrets even from each other and The like little subtitle here says family first always and one of my works in progress One of the books that I'm writing is about a family where that's the, the motto family first family comes first and they do heinous things for it and I don't know this just reminded me of that and it, it just it sounded like such a good idea it's about three cousins that haven't seen each other for a really long time they're estranged and their grandmother dies and I think there's a fortune involved I don't know but look it was an impulse buy okay the next book is actually the next two books that I'm gonna show you are books that again I was waiting on and they were from the from Blackwells and the other one was from La Casa del Libro which is which one was oh the one from um, Good Morning Midnight was from La Casa del Libro because they didn't have it at Blackwells but I brought I bought a Laxaway by uh, Darcy Little Badger I'm so excited about this I know very little about this again I like to know very little about books before I go into them but I know that this book first of all okay that's like the inside it's beautiful and I know that all of the indigenous reviewers that I followed that read this book loved it apparently this book is about a young woman no, it's, she's a, not a woman. She's a she's a young girl. She is Apache, Lip, Lipin Apache. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And her cousin was murdered. Now the thing is, Alatsoe can communicate with the dead, and her cousin tells her that he was brutally murdered. His murder has not been solved, and that she has to go solve it. And I've also heard that uh, first the character I believe is Ace. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but that's what I seem to remember and also that the mother character in this book is like an actual mother character like we don't get those like flippant Parents that are just like yeah, sure go into the spooky house by yourself You know like the parents are present in the story. So I'm really excited to read it um, I I have been loving reading books by indigenous authors and you will see in the next book that I got that that is a theme in my books because I finally got my hands on Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabeshi Rice. That's how I've seen it pronounced. Now I already read this book, I reviewed it, I loved it, but in case you don't know this book is about the apocalypse of a society but because we are in a reserve of Canadian um, Native Americans or First Nations, I believe they prefer the, the term First Nations, we don't know what happens. We just know that the lights got turned off, that the only place where they can get food is just not receiving any food, and we have no idea. And winter is coming, and if you know anything about Canada, is that it's really cold. And how are they going to survive this winter? 
and um, some people arrive that might pose a threat to them more than themselves. So yeah, this book is incredible. I highly, highly recommend it, especially now for like the like extreme winter months. This is really cool. And I'm just looking. The one thing, one one of the things that I love about Blackwells is they always send me the coolest like. I, I love their, what are these called? I can only think of the word in Spanish. Their bookmarks, yeah, they always send cool bookmarks. And also, I, I've been, I have been enjoying ordering from Blackwells and learning to enjoy the wait for something. That has been new and I have been really enjoying it. Like, I, I, I forgot how much enjoyment you can get from waiting for something that you really want instead of just getting next day delivery and you know not having people work saturdays and sundays to get books to me which i probably won't even get to for months but anyway the next book that i have might surprise you because i said that this book was horrible but here's the thing this book has stayed with me in a way where I'm just like, I'll be doing the dishes and I'll be like, oh my God, that scene from that book. And then I'll be just laying in bed and I'll just like, it's been in my head for so long that I think I was a bit fast to give it such a low rating when actually it's an amazing book or I don't know, maybe the ending just wasn't to my liking, but that didn't mean that it deserves such a low rating and also I really wanted it because of the cover art and that is Horrid by Katrina Lino. I read this in a um, vlog and at the time I was really disappointed by the end of it but honestly I think I might have changed my mind. See this is why you need to sit with books and not just go and, and like oh, the first idea I have you know like with it. Sometimes I think you need to sit with them and I think that this is that style of book. I think that this is actually a really good book. It's just that the ending was not the ending that I wanted. I think that was it. It was just not the ending that I wanted, therefore I gave it a lower rating. But now it's just, I keep thinking and I keep going back to this book and I actually made, they, they make a certain coffee in this book which is a lavender latte and i actually made a lavender latte because it just i don't know it just stuck with me and uh yeah i wanted to have it in my collection i just, you know it's i might have bought it on impulse it was really expensive when i say it was really expensive this book was 17 euros that's like high end for me but i don't know hmm i just I really wanted it. <laughs> that's, there, that's it. I really wanted it. Um, if you don't know what this book is about, this book is about a, a mother and daughter duo that are moving from California to somewhere in, in, you know, not California, the other side of the United States. I don't know, Seattle. It's not Seattle. Where are they going? Maine. <laughs> They're going to Maine. Anyway, so they go to Maine and um, they're she's dealing with a lot of grief from the loss of her father but also her mother seems to be keeping secrets from her that um just are very detrimental to her mental health her mother's and hers and also the one thing that i will say about this book it's this book is the typical book where it's like oh no we have to move to maine to grandma's old manor oh my gosh i hate the idea of getting a mortgage free manor darn you know it's like one of those things where it's like this this is clearly aimed at teenagers because i think adults would be like hell yeah manor for free fuck yeah ghost what the fuck ever you know it doesn't matter <laughs> so so yeah, so I bought Horrid by Katrina Lino. <laughs> now, the next book I have, I didn't buy myself, but The Love of My Life. My sister from another missus, Miss Elena, Lenita, Miss Advanced, uh, Sufficiently Advanced Lena. I love that name, by the way. Have I ever told you, babe, that I love that name? Um, send me uh, this book, which is Piranesi, uh, Piranesi sorry, by Susanna Clark dying to read this book she also see she this this beautiful human sent me the hardcover which is the most beautiful card cover ever i just i can't she is absolutely incredible and she sent me this for christmas which is really early and she said 
I'm sure you weren't expecting this so soon, so surprise. You have made my year so much better. I'm so happy I got to meet you. I'm so happy I got to meet you too. And uh, I can't wait until we can meet in person and do shenanigans, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know? So um, I have very little idea what this is about. And I've been told that it's better like that. It's basically, I think, the story of... It's, it's the story of a little satyr and who lives in the house. And maybe he has always been there or maybe not. We don't know. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm really excited about it. Also, the fact that it was a present. Thank you so much, Elena. Te quiero. All right. <laughs> Only three more to go, I promise. Then I got another thriller because it, I don't know if you noticed that I was like like heavy on the thrillers this 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 past couple of months that's because the, the winter months for me are the best time to read thrillers and i got red river girl our journey into the heart of canada by joanna jolly now from what i understand this is the true story of the murder of 15 year old runaway tina fontaine and what happens with this murder how the case is treated and how basically in Canada, you know, we like to think, I don't think we like to think, I just think we automatically assume that in the United States is the only place where, I don't know, crimes like this happen where indigenous people are not treated as fairly as other people and then it's like, oh no, Canada, everything's perfect in Canada, when in reality it's just much of the same. So I really want to read this, it's a true story book, I don't I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, but I know that this was on my wish list for a long time. And since I was already obviously <laughs> treating myself, I decided to treat myself some more. Also, just so you know, I have way more space for books now because my husband took all of his books into his office. So I have three more shelves to fill. So don't you worry about where I'm putting my books. Not that you do. I don't think that you do. Okay, I'm gonna leave. Oh, which one do I leave for last? Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna leave a, a science fiction for the end, so I'm just gonna go with The Haunted Tropics, Caribbean Ghost Stories, edited by Martin Munro. Now, if you don't know, um, Venezuela is part of the Caribbean, like, part, okay, my, my camera's flashing, let me change out the battery. Sorry about that, I'm sorry things look a little bit different, but had to change out the battery, that's what happens when you buy so many books, but anyway, Venezuelan is part of the Caribbean and I was hoping that we would get some Venezuelan stories, ghost stories from, you know, that part <laughs> where I was born. But we, I looked through it and no, but we do get stories from other parts, uh, other islands. So we don't actually get stories from Venezuela, but we get a bunch of stories from different islands in the Caribbean and they're like ghost stories that have been lost due to colonization and I was so excited to get this. Um, but I won't be getting this, I won't be getting to this for a while because right now I'm in a thriller mood, not in a horror mood. But I definitely recommend um, that we get more stories written by indigenous people about their culture and their spaces. So this is The Haunted Tropics. And the last book that I got, I love, it's a science fiction on the top. That's War of AI by Ishan Pandey, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Ooh, I love the inside of this. Um, I'm not sure where Ishan Pandey is from. I think this is by a BIPOC author. I will, in, um, I will insert here if I'm right or wrong. Um, I will look it up. I didn't look it up before the video because I actually hadn't seen the name. What I do know is this was recommended by Rachel, I think, from Shades of Orange. And I am not even sure what this book is about, <laughs> but I will read the back to you. I just know that I saw it, I wanted it, I bought it. So let's read the back. In the year 2047, the whole world celebrates New Year's Day, except Azrael, a mechanic from Sector A17. He distrusts the new government founded by androids called humanoids, ruled by the tyrannical Queen Andromeda. He tries to live his life peacefully, but he slowly finds himself getting involved with terrorists and revolutionaries. So far, loving it. But it looks like fate has chosen Azeril. Azeril? <laughs> Probably saying that wrong. To fight under the banner of humanity. He must go through difficult challenges along with fighting the cybernetic soldier soldiers of Architect, 
to determine the outcome of this war of AI. The world order has changed and technology is truly ruling the world. Man created his own god, one made of steel, wires and circuits. Man worshipped it, treated it like a queen, and like a queen it ruled over him. Can we talk? That sounds in fucking incredible. That sounds so good. I love AI warfare. You guys know that um, um, unreliable AI is one of my favorite um, aspects of science fiction. So it's like, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> so yeah, this is the last book of this here haul. Um, I also bought more books today because um, I am doing a video about this website posted 105 sci-fi books that you absolutely must read which i will be reacting to and out of 105 books i had read 100 not 100 i had read 35 and that's a pretty good number honestly because i think these lists are ridiculous but i thought that this actually was a good list so the next video that i'm filming i don't know if it's the one that i am uploading next because they're pretty long videos one followed after the other is that list so i ordered some books so that i can have them so i can read them for that list so yeah i don't know why i'm telling you all of this but that is my haul i hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching thank you so much for putting up with all of the technical issues the light the sound the battery but you know what if you're here if you watch this till the end leave me a moon emoji I love that moon emoji because it's kind of sciency, but I think it also means something else. So just leave me a rocket emoji. There you go. Yeah. And well, I just watched The Mandalorian. So when I say I will see you in another galaxy far, far away, I really mean it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye.